So Bloomberg claims there is new evidence of hacked supermicro hardware found in U.S. telecom. This discovery shows that China continues to sabotage critical technology components bound for America. And maybe you could hear the skepticism in my voice. So this is part of the Bloomberg China hack story, as it's been kind of referred to, that our supply chain has been infiltrated and Supermicro has been shipping chips that are completely compromised and da 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 This is probably my final video on this unless some incredible thing happens, but so far it looks like it's all a bunch of stories. And I'll jump to this part of the article. I mean, I'll leave a link so you can read it, but I thought this was funny. They had Sepio Systems, and if, real quick, who Sepio Systems is. They find ghosts in your hardware, ghosts put there by other companies, uh, you know, because they implanted something. They, they, they validate hardware for computers to make sure it was not compromised. They have different tools for doing this, for keeping the ghosts out of the machines. But this part really caught me as a little bit funny. Applebaum said one key sign of the implant is that a manipulated Ethernet connector has metal sides instead of the usual plastic. And I'm like, huh? Metal? I grabbed, and there's a reason I'm holding a prop here. Uh, it's a PCI network card by Realtek. These are, you know, the cheap ones you can find. This is particularly a TrendNet model that I know of. It's not compromised, but if you're familiar with these, they, uh, they're metal on the backing. So the part, and I didn't feel like pulling out a camera, but good enough on my webcam here, you get the idea. The part that surrounds the RJ45 port is metal. And it's metal on even the cheapest $10 network cards and these old ones that have been around forever and new ones that I found. And this is common. They, I, they always seem to be this way. So I thought this was a weird statement to put in here. Like, look for metal around the network card. Well, yeah, we're going to find that. It's pretty much on all the servers pretty much universally have metal around them. It's part of the reinforcement in the way it's soldered in. So, yeah, that statement's a little odd. But go on to read and blah, blah, blah. It's real, but can give us no details. So, <clears throat> allegedly, Sepio, who validates hardware, found these scary chips inside of a U.S. telecom through one of their audits. It was a client of theirs, and they said, oh, yeah, we had to say this is very real. I don't doubt that we find these in targeted attacks. So let's Occam Razors this. Let's just break this down real quick of why I think this is a story. Supply and a chain attack, great, compelling, could really happen. Something we should be absolutely diligent. Don't let your guard down. Yes, there could be a supply chain attack. All those things are true. Did it actually happen is what we're trying to determine. Now, is it plausible? Lots of things are plausible. That makes good story. Makes it very believable story. That's why we like a lot of books. Very based on a reality that we live in and it's very plausible. Yeah, all these things could happen. This makes a lot of sense. But in reality, did it happen? When you look at the facts, it is really difficult to do a supply chain level attack. It is the holy grail of hacks because if we could secretly just have back doors and everything that went out, government's wishes would be that because now they can just do whatever they want whenever they want to go, hey, we already got the chip in there and we know this company bought those servers. So let's flip the switch, turn it on and take over this company's network so we can see what's going inside. You would raise every red flag. Not to mention, attacking at the supply chain level becomes a challenge because you have to trust all the employees not to say anything like, hey, who's the weird people coming in and adding extra chips that's going down the line? You have a lot of pieces of trust that have to be maintained. There's a lot of issues with this. So it's a very difficult attack to pull off. Not implausible, difficult. Let's look at Bob and Accounting. Send him a phishing email, we're in. Read any books on hacking, look through any debriefs on hacks that went through and went down. They find that someone internally at the company somewhere clicked a link and the hackers got in. That is the most common scenario, targeted attacks, targeted directly at someone you know works at a place so they can infiltrate it. It's the most likely scenario for how any attack has happened and it's much easier. Now, targeted attacks against hardware do occur. And we've seen this, Snowden talked about this, and what those are is when we know a shipment of servers is going somewhere, one of the government agencies, foreign or domestic here in the U.S., targets those servers, takes them apart, adds whatever they want, software, hardware, whatever thing they're going to do, and gets in their systems. And hopefully that company doesn't have any outbound monitoring to see weird data leaving their system. And we know that attack has occurred and it's gonna be denied by both sides. And that's a more plausible way to do it versus infiltrating the company from the raw at the super micro level and hoping those servers get distributed everywhere. I mean, I granted, there is some knowledge 
if you work inside a super micro and you have an inside guy who goes, oh yeah, Sony just ordered 200 servers, AT&T just ordered 200 servers, you're going to want to add your chips to these. But they're more likely to be added after they leave the factory and things like that, statistically, not saying they were. That's a more plausible thing. But as we know how most hacks occur, it's still the old spy techniques. It's still targeting the person who works at the company, getting someone hired who's an undercover person to work at the company and leak out the secrets. These are all way more plausible, easier to pull off, back to the Occam's Razor thing. Everything would say that is the way to do it. It's less resource intensive and more likely to happen. Now, back to the story here. I'm going to say don't rip out your super micro stuff. I just don't see this any more credible. So it's been a few days since this came out. The only update they've given us is they've sent us nowhere. They gave us no leads. They've given us no hardware to look at. I'm not saying you need to reveal your sources. I'm saying you could easily say look for XYZ model chip and look for extra hardware or use a firmware detection to do this then you have something. You have something we can look at. And if we really are under threat, they should be doing that. That would be proper due diligence because we have a time bomb if that gets out in the public. We have to disclose it so we can figure out how to mitigate it. So if there is a secret firmware and you're just waiting and there's a command you send and it's easy, well, we need to know about it now because eventually the bad guys will figure it out because unfortunately information doesn't stay secret for long and these back doors, if they exist, someone else may find ways to activate them and that would be terrible and cause the attack on our infrastructure. So if the evidence actually is as real as they're saying, you can whisper out there into the channels, into the security researchers who will have a mitigation for this problem and we will work on it. I don't think it's real. None of this has come forward. None of this has happened. and. We've seen Joe Fitz. Uh, he did an interview with the Risky Business Podcast. He was one of the name sources. He says doesn't sound, you know, he even kind of hinted that it was all taken out of context from the letter that he sent to the editor. Tavis Ormandy doesn't seem to care much for it either, and he is an amazing security researcher. He works over at Google's Project Zero right now, and just he is someone that I look to for some of these. I've also looked at Bruce Schneier, Krebs on Security. There's a lot of security industry people who are talented at this, who are going, show us, show us, show us, and nothing. Tavis actually uh, tweeted, and I'll leave a link to this, because he talked about even how Sepio systems systems work and how they intercepted it, so it is even less clear on how they got knowledge of it. He's actually made a few tweets as I thought this was interesting, so I'll leave a link to that, too, if you're curious about what this is, uh, the Sepio solution for things, which, as he tweeted, apparently this product from Bloomberg Source is selling. I had to find the specs in archive drawer because their website doesn't work. Well, uh, yeah. So kind of a mystery box. Like I said, they get the ghost on machine. I don't know anything good or bad about Sepio Systems, but, you know, it feels like a corporate company that markets to other corporate companies that puts ghosts on chips because that's what scares corporate people. I don't know. <laughs> I also thought it was weird. It says, Dreams Time. Is this a stock photo? Well, I guess it is a stock photo. It still says uh, Dreams Time on it. So I found it on a stock photo, which irony is they... Apparently, this one doesn't say Dreamstime on it, so is that – isn't Dreamstime's a stock photo place? Yes, Dreamstime is a stock photo place, can confirm. It's not, I thought I thought that's who they were. So apparently, this company has uh, been featured in lots of places but can't buy stock. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to pick on the credibility of these companies, but really, you're using – not purchase stock photos. Anyways, I won't rant about that. That's a completely separate thing. I'm not trying to tear them down. Okay, maybe I'm going to poke fun at them a little bit for using uh, stock images that they didn't buy on their website for a commercial product that charges a lot of money. Anyways, while I'm done ranting about this, I'll leave links to all the stuff I just talked about. I don't think Bloomberg's going to provide us any more evidence. Uh, this story is going to go by the wayside. I think it may be one reporter really excited who doesn't understand technology, who took things out of context. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But uh, I don't rip out your super micros. Uh, I don't, it did – a lot of stock manipulation could have gone on here. There could be a lot of other things going on. But from the technology standpoint, it doesn't make sense for this attack. It's a good story. It's a compelling story. I think supply chain is a huge risk. But – I don't think that's how this actually occurred and how it went down. It's just a story still with no evidence. If there was evidence, someone would have stepped forward. Someone would have found it. If Bloomberg wants to keep their credibility, they would have pointed us in it. But yeah, that's it for now. That's all I have to say about this in the last video I think I'll be doing, unless something incredible happens, which I don't think it will. Thanks.
Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.